are talking about elephant money. Price per coin, 378 one millionths of a cent. Now that might sound like peanuts, but give me one second to explain. Total supply, one quadrillion tokens. And if you don't know what quadrillion is, that is three zeros after one billion. Now getting back to the price that is being compared to peanuts, the market cap is actually $378 million. The actual circulating supply of this token is 501 billion tokens. The actual market cap of that circulating supply is about $193 million. The volume on this coin traded per day is about 1.6 million. The percent of the entire supply that is trading every day is literally less than a percent. It is 0.4%. Their time in business is almost one year, but their relevant time in business is only about five months because they didn't start actually doing good or popping off until December of 2021, just like every other DeFi in the space. The percent gain on this coin since inception has been 5,100%. That's 51 times your money. The highest APY that you can earn for staking elephant money, 672%. Now you're probably asking what exactly is elephant money? And I get it, these crypto names are absolutely diabolical, they're crazy, it sounds like somebody made this stuff up. But this is a real project and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So elephant money is an automatic compounding protocol. It's on the Binance Smart Chain and it also gives the users the ability to stake the coins and earn passive rewards as well as mint bonds. It also has a stable coin linked to it that's called Trunk. And Trunk is actually paired with BUSD and it is interchangeable one-to-one. -one. Now it all sounds good, right? But how do you actually make money with this protocol? You actually buy the token on either PancakeSwap or Hotbit. Now make sure you have Binance Coin so that you can swap. You can either participate in Trunk staking pools, participate in the Herd Partner Referral Program, or you can participate in Stampede Bonding. Now don't go cross-eyed on me. We'll talk about all of these later in link. One thing I do wanna cover is how does elephant money actually afford to pay all of this stuff out, right? Which is usually what most people come to my videos for, so here are the tokenomics. Every transaction has a 10% fee. This does not matter whether it is a buy, a sell, or a transfer. All of them have 10% fees. So make sure you're adjusting for slippage anytime you go to buy or sell this coin or transfer it into a new wallet. So 5% of this 10% actually goes to the existing token holders. Then 5% goes into the locked liquidity pool. There's also a 2.5% fee to claim your trunk rewards directly into your wallet. There are no fees for staking or unstaking. And there is also no fee for what we would technically call compounding, which they call rolling your trunk tokens into your balance for your staking rewards. Now, as we know, there were one quadrillion tokens minted. Of that quadrillion, 49% of those tokens were actually burned. 1% went into a marketing pool and development pool for the protocol. 25% went into the liquidity pool, and then 25% went to the people who participated in the liquidity drive. Now you're probably asking like, dude, I have no idea what a liquidity drive is, expound. So the people that participated in this liquidity drive essentially locked up their Binance tokens for essentially a whitelist spot, and then they received their tokens whenever they were minted for a better price. Those people literally could have over 50X their money at the present price right now, and they could have close to 100X their money at the peak. Now, think Lion King. The Elephant Graveyard is a smart contract that rebalances its ownership of the supply to 50% every day if it is deemed necessary. Now, as Mufasa would say, stay away from the elephant graveyard, but apparently this is a very integral part of this protocol. They say that the elephant graveyard does three different things. One is that it prevents holders from getting diluted over time. Secondly, the holders receive more rewards. And third, it incentivizes more long-term strategies. I actually get this, I'm not going to refute it, I'm not going to say anything about it because I understand exactly what they're saying. The only thing I will say is you need to make sure that they aren't minting more tokens than they're burning. Because if they are, then it is not deflationary, it's actually inflationary, and it's not gonna be good for token holders. Now, Trunk 
is a collateralized like stable coin asset that is backed by other assets that make the ratio and the redemption $1 and 1 to 1 on BUSD, no matter what. Now, there is a 1% claim fee, so make sure you're taking that into account whenever you're going to cash anything out. Trunk can be swapped 1 to 1 with BUSD anytime. There's also an arbitrage opportunity if Trunk goes above a dollar or below a dollar. Now, what you want to make sure if you are trying to do these arbitrage opportunities, make sure that it's not only above a dollar, but it is above one dollar and one cent, and that it is not below a dollar, but it is actually below 99 cents. And that is to account for that 1% fee whenever you convert. That way it's not a wash for you and you didn't just waste your time. Now, you can stake this token to earn yield. We know that. This actually comes out to about 205% APR per year, and that doesn't take into account compounding. Again, everyone, APR means that is just your rate of return if you do nothing. APY means this is your rate of return if you were to compound all of your profits into it for a year. Now, this is on the Trunk Stampede pairing pool. Trunk allows you to compound earnings by staking Trunk to earn passive rewards from the 1% drip dividend pool. Reward credits are generated upon minting and redemption. So the rates are 11% on minting and 4% on redemption. All pools release 1% of the entire pool as their daily rewards. 25% of that BUSD that is used to mint any trunk is actually used to buy back elephant tokens to try to establish a floor price. Now just to touch really quick on how you get paid out in staking and how you can calculate how much money you're going to make and what your yield will be, I'm gonna do some math for you really quick. Your payout is received proportionate to your percentage of that entire pool. For example, if there is 10K in trunk in that pool. You stake 1K in trunk. That means that you have 10% of that entire pool. If the pool has 10,000 trunk in it and it's supposed to pay out 1% per day, that means it would pay out 100 trunk per day total to everyone that's staking in the pool. Now, since you have 10% basically ownership stake in that pool, out of that 100 tokens that got paid out, you would be paid out 10 of them. Not too bad. So as you can see, the more percentage of those pools that you actually own or provide liquidity for, you will be paid out more. Now let's go over Stampede really quick. So Stampede is the bonding system. It allows you to deposit trunk and you can earn up to a 672% APY or a 205% APR. Now obviously we know Trunk is a partially collateralized stablecoin, so this one might be actually a little bit more stable than staking Elephant. You bond or burn that Trunk and it's a 50-50 split. 50% 50 goes to the Elephant Treasury and 50% goes to the liquidity pair Elephant BUSD on PancakeSwap. You earn a fixed 2.05x on your coins per year. This equates out to 0.56% per day. And that's assuming that you don't compound or as they like to put it, roll. The more total value that is locked in trunk, the staking rewards actually go up. Now, what is the herd referral program? So it's exactly what you would think. Reward credits are issued whenever somebody signs up using your referral link. Now you get 0.5% of whatever they deposit and they actually get 0.5% of whatever they deposit. So it's actually pretty cool that it's paying everyone. And you will also get everything that those people roll into it as profits, 1% of that as well, and it will be split 50-50 in between you and the person. You do not have to have a minimum balance in your wallet of any type of stable coin or regular volatile coin like some of these other protocols do. So I actually thought that that was kind of cool and I like that about elephant money. Now let's go over the audit the KYC and like the team and the protectionary measures that they are taking. So really quick, I see nothing that is indicating any like doxing or KYCs anywhere. So if you know, let me know. But as far as I can see, it's not in the white paper, it's not on the website, etc. I was listening to a podcast that the creator of Elephant Money was on and He's not showing his face. He's not saying who he is. He literally calls himself BT. And the only thing he's really told people is that he used to go to MIT. He went to Boston University. He used to work for State Street and Fidelity. But again, 
how many people in the world can claim all of that and how many people in the world could just make that up because they don't actually have to put their credentials out there. Hey guys, by the way, actually, I graduated with an MBA and a Juris Doctorate in Law from Harvard. So just, you know, so you know, but I'm not going to show you. So this company was actually in business before doxing and KYC was like a huge thing. So I understand why they didn't have it before, but now with the current climate, it's probably best to consider doing one or both of those things. I did like this about elephant money because I feel like a lot of protocols aren't doing this, but they do have an insurance coverage that will cover malicious hacks, malware, stuff like that. If someone tries to come in and hack the program, now it's not going to protect a rug pull. It's not going to protect them just messing something up and losing money. It doesn't protect any of that. This is absolutely like Think about an insurance policy for your house. It's like if lightning were to strike your house, right? And it's not your fault. Now, a lot of bigger protocols like Anchor, Aave, even Crypto.com are using this insurance.io, which is the same policy that Elephant Money has. So I really do like that. And you can actually go and check out their policy. But let's go over their audits really quick. So they actually have two. One of them was super impressive, which was Certic. The Certic audit was performed in March of 2021. This audit actually came back extremely favorable for Elephant Money. There weren't any ownership problems or anything like that that they stated in this. So I liked that. And this actually looks good in a DeFi space where everyone has like total control over their protocols. Like go look at Safu, go look at all the auto compounding ones like RingFi and Mega Safu, Ultra Safu, all of these, probably Titano as well. They all have 100% total control over this. And if they want a rug pull, they can. Now I say all of this and I drop like a little bit of salt on it. And the reason is because it gets a little bit more problematic once we get into this next thing that I'm about to say. So the solidity audit that they did in November of 2021 is way more telling than the Certic audit. I don't know what Certic was doing, but they didn't find all of this stuff. So it kind of rubbed me the wrong way on Certic's like credibility in this market. So there's some pretty concerning things in the solidity audit and let's go over those really quick. The owner has the ability to add or remove any address from the white list at any time. So this doesn't really seem that bad until you listen to this second thing that I'm about to follow it up with. Whitelisted users can mint any amount of tokens to any address at any time, as long as it does not cause the supply to exceed the maximum integer of 115 quattro victillion. Like that's a number probably no one's ever even heard of. So imagine how massive of a number that is. That could dilute so much of the market cap, everybody's coins would be worth like literally nothing, literally one one billionth, one quadrillionth of a cent. So this seems problematic, but if they fix that, I get it. So there's a functionality that can be enabled and disabled by the owner. And it's probably best to keep this one toggled on and maybe just give up your ownership rights. The liquidity fee charged on the transactions is stored in the contract. And once a threshold of 500 billion is met, used to fund the pancake swap liquidity. So you should probably keep that turned on so you can continue funding the liquidity pool. Now, the recipient of these newly created LP tokens is actually the owner of the contract. I really don't like that, but you know, I guess it is what it is. The owner of the contract can exclude and include accounts from transfer fees and reward distribution. I don't like this at all because they could literally turn off the rewards and they could turn transfer fees on and off anytime. So this could actually turn into collusion. So if those weren't enough, here's the main ones that I see are actually like super problematic. The owner can add or remove a pool at any time. Okay, I get that. And that makes sense. They've already removed like nine pools and you know, that's cool, do whatever. And you can see that on their website. This one, whitelisted addresses have the ability to withdraw funds from the treasury and mint trunk tokens at any time. That is not rug proof. I don't care what anybody says. And literally, it doesn't even have to be the owners taking it. Like I'm sure the owners are whitelisted, but there's other people that are whitelisted. So that's not cool. The owner can change the threshold to adding liquidity at any time. And we kind of already covered this earlier. The owner can change the backed pool, the secondary reward pool, and the performance pool addresses at literally any time that they want. They can also change the elephant reserve and they can update the threshold 
for payouts. Now, whitelisted addresses can also update the credit balance in the contract at any given time. And then this is the one that absolutely would make me run and not even touch this protocol. Any whitelisted address can remove funds from the Elephant Reserve or the BUSD Treasury at any given time. Okay. So with that being said, don't listen to me for good, right? Don't listen to me for bad. Do whatever you want to do. I'm just the guy giving you the facts, giving you the numbers, giving you that Drew's secret sauce that everybody likes to put on their stakes, right? So again, if you want to do this, that's on you. I'm going to tell you my personal opinion is I will not be getting into this project. And if I did get into this project, I would probably drop like 50 bucks in this like I did with the my diamond team or whatever and just see how it goes. So with that being said, thank you all so much for showing up to the video. I appreciate all the love, all the support. We are above that 2K subs. I dropped that 2K subs knowledge bomb video. There will be more to come. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Make sure you smash that like button. Bang on that notification bell after you hit the subscribe button. Comment anything that you want in that comment section. I listen to you guys and I appreciate all of the suggestions, the banter, and the love and support. So with that being said, everybody have a good day. I can't wait to see you in the next video.